What's up everybody? It's been a while, I guess, since I've done one of these. I guess it's a bit of a story time slash con report and more importantly, a giveaway. Before I jump into this video, I want to give a special thank you to my Muddy Cold patrons. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to become a Muddy Cold patron, please click the link in the description below. I also put a link at the end of the video. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button below. I know more than half of you are not subscribed, and I don't know why. You watch my videos, you keep coming back. Just hit that subscribe button and you'll know when I have new videos because I post on Wednesdays and Thursdays and sometimes I throw a little extra video in there and if you don't know about that extra video because you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. I know you guys love Disacode and you see that I'm doing a little Disacode giveaway and I'll put a little timestamp below so if you wanted to skip to straight to the giveaway but I want to talk about the con that shall not be named on my channel anymore. All the way back in 2015, I begrudgingly went to this con once more to see the iconic, legendary, badass lady Anna Suchia, which I'm still baffled to this day on how in the world they were able to get such a top-tier artiste, actor, singer, model, iconic lady. That seeing Disacode. These things, these these artists, this is why I end up giving money to evil people because I want to support my faves. Because I want to support the artist. And I hate it. It hurts me right here. Deep in my soul. So I just want to let you know, I do not support this convention, and that is why I don't mention their name anymore, because I don't want to give them that credit. But I do want to go back just to tell you my experience back in 2015, which is, can you believe it, six years ago? Crazy. So... Since it's been six years ago, I can't really delve into too many like details of things that have happened at this convention back then because it's six years ago. Like, most people don't remember stuff from six years ago. There are a few things that I can express on my experience with the musical guests. Um, if you haven't done so already, you can click on the card over here. I did do a vlog. Uh, about things that I did at this convention. Um, I also went there for a specific cosplayer as well, and oh my gosh, he's still wonderful. I really love Kaname. I never had a cosplay husbando until he came into my life, so Kaname is my thing. He is my jam. Everybody was simping on Reika. I'm into Kaname, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> that was before simping was a thing. That wasn't a word back then in 2015. It was a totally different time. So I'm going to go in order of how I saw these musical guests. Um, unfortunately, I do not have anything to give away for Anna Suchia because I already gave it away in my 10-year anniversary live stream, which I'll put a card below if you want to like sit through that. I kind of like talked a little bit about my experience at this convention, but now I'm going to delve just a little bit deeper, just, just a tiny bit. Uh, just digging in the recess of my mind of six years ago experience. I will say every time I've gone to this convention I've... the good parts I think stem from my interactions with musical guests or any other guests. Uh, some are cosplay guests because apparently I met Chew Bear and I met Stella Chew. Those interactions were great. Experiences I've had with my friends those were fun times but of course, there are things that were bad that could have been handled a little better, uh, and I'll, I'll get into that. So first, musical guests, I, I don't know if they're still together or not. I'll put a note, Editor Mika will say something about the status of this group. Uh, but I was excited and kind of confuzzled just a little bit. Uh, appearance from a little of uh, all female 
Asian rock group by the name of Nylon Pink. I was excited to see them. They're based in California, so it was great to see them there. They didn't perform in the usual concert main event area. They performed on a small stage in the um, reactor exhibit, I think that's what they call it. It's where they have all these different uh, cars on display. Some of them are vintage uh, vintage cars. Some are cars that have been modified and decorated into a lot of, you know, anime characters, lots of special wraps that have been on uh, placed onto the, the car's body and, and decoration interior and stuff. It's just a showcase of cars because they do have a showcase of cars. I don't know why. I mean, actually I do. I know there's a car culture in Japan and I mean, that's cool. It's very, I will say that is a very unique uh, feature for this convention and I have not seen that in any other anime convention so that's pretty cool I think. I mean I'm not super into calls, cars but I think that's an interesting unique thing about this convention. So they performed on a small stage there so everyone gathered there. I had a pretty good spot. If I have some footage or whatever I'll definitely intersplice it here. Um, for all of these concerts uh, if you're watching this on Muddy Cult, the blog, there will be pictures of the concert, of stuff that I've, like, all the pictures I've taken, at least the good ones. I'll link them below this video, and you can click and look and see my terrible photography skills. Uh, some of these were on my old phone that I no longer had, and some of them were captured on uh, my concert camera, is what I called it back then, because it took pretty good video. The sound quality was really good compared to my phone. Uh, but some of the pictures are not the best, because the shutter speed, I guess, doesn't keep up with a lot of motion very well, so sometimes those are a little blurry, so I'm going to try to avoid sharing some of those. Uh, but yeah, you can check out those pictures below, and also the giveaway item will be in that little gallery below this video if you're watching it on my blog. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, I always put the link of my blog below too, so you can just click that and you'll find it there. Um, so watching Nylon Pink was really fantastic and fun. They did a mixture of original songs and they mixed it with some covers and at the time I was little newbie baby obsessed with K-pop, so they did some K-pop covers, which is kind of how I... Well, really, that's how I was introduced to Nylon Pink. I think it was the Girls' Generation song Run Double Run, and I looked at that video and fell in love with them instantly. They're just so fantastic, and that made me delve into more of their music, and so I really like them. Um, the concert was really fun, very high energy, the crowd recepted them very well. Um, it wasn't like a huge crowd, but it was a good, you know, small, intimate group of people. There had have been, I don't know, maybe 100 people, something like that. Maybe more than that. I don't know. I don't know numbers. But it was a good crowd, and I enjoyed rocking out. People were really responsive to a lot of the K-pop covers. Because K-pop was fairly new in the U.S. It was before, you know, how, when, uh, before Gangnam Style became viral. Definitely way before, like, BTS blew up here. So they were babies, because they came out in 2013, and this is 2015. So they've only had two years of traction here. So, not only Pink was pretty fun, um, I was able to meet them at an autograph session, and they signed a poster, which I have a space for to Put, I think I was gonna... I don't remember why I was gonna put it in my room, but I have an autograph poster and I got their little special CD that they printed out and they signed that as well and they were just super nice. They call, One of them complimented my costume. I was dressed up as Ryu from a uh, cute High Earth Defense Club love because that was a popular series then. She thought it's cute. Um, so they were really fun group. I really enjoy them. I really need to like go back and look to see if they're active, see if they have any new content. Um, 
funny thing, I am now following Kiki Wong on Instagram, and I just kept in the inkling in my mind, I was just like, she looks so familiar, she looks so familiar, and before I started filming, I was looking up something to see if they were, if they did anything new, if there was like, if I was remembering stuff correctly, and I saw her name in it, and that's how I know her, she was in Nylon Pink, so if you haven't checked them out, they are a super awesome group, uh, whether they're active or not, it's worth checking out. Um, next was Disico. They performed in the, the main concert. Um, it was my first time seeing them live. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in any other video or any other post or live stream or whatever. Um, I have seen them multiple times after this point. This was my first experience seeing them. So I was excited because I really enjoyed Disico. I got into... Most people were, like, into just Akira for her modeling and stuff, and I was, like, unaware of her modeling. I was, a, I knew of her from Disico the band, so it was kind of great to finally see the band, because I think she came in by herself the first time she came to this convention, and I don't know if I mentioned it or not in another video, video or whatever, but uh, it was great that her band came over and they got to perform. They did do a Q&A. The Q&A was kind of a hot mess. They were put into this like really small room. I remember rushing with Angeline, I believe, to get to this Q&A and it was it was okay. Um, I'm still trying to find if I wrote down any sort of questions from said Q&A. If I find it, I'll definitely post it for sure. Uh, but there were some interesting questions. Uh, I remember one of the members, uh, I'm kind of struggling with names for some reason, but one of them, uh, I remember them saying, like, oh, I, I'm into, like, my, my style is very Otokonoko, uh, which is, like, a, it's, like, kind of, it's kind of, like, cross-dressing. They're, in, they were into dressing, uh, very feminine, like, and they like to be in dresses, and, uh, which is pretty normal. It's it's not a weird thing uh, in the visual case scene, so there's a lot of androgyny in that genre, so it wasn't like super surprising or anything. Um, but I, as time went on, he kind of like dropped that image, but I mean, it's I mean not that big of a deal, but I just thought that was interesting that I still remember that moment and I don't know why I, I do. Uh, but the Q&A was okay, but also could have been better, but it definitely wasn't as bad as the Nightmare Q&A, which is still by far the worst Q&A I have ever been to. Uh, you can hear that story in my other storytime blog for Nightmare, because, oof. Uh, the Q&A was great. Uh, the concert, I think they did the Q&A before the concert. Um, the concert was really fun. There was lots of people. They were in the main event area because they were opening up for uh, Anna Suchia. Um, they played a lot of familiar songs. Um, the energy was really, really high, really, really good. Uh, it seemed like there was quite a few, like, fans of the group. <laughs> really that close to stage it's more like in the middle uh i do remember kind of complaining about i think it was yeah i think it was this particular convention um there was a slow song don't remember the title of it where all of a sudden people decided we're gonna make a circle mosh pit for the song or we're just gonna start pushing people like it's a mosh pit and i'm just like it is a ballad Ballots do not trigger mosh pits. Also, you're not supposed to do mosh pits. Um, this is one thing I don't like about this convention's lack of rules when it comes to concerts, because a lot of anime conventions I've gone to, they, especially like Akon and, and, and Tokyo and Tulsa, a lot of anime conventions I've gone to for bands, because usually I go for the bands, they set rules in 
place before the show starts, and they and one of them is usually it's like no crowd surfing, no moshing, those kinds of things, and I I know they have failed at every concert I've gone to to they don't set these types of rules, and I know that's that's one reason like one of my friends got bruises at the Nightmare concert uh, because people were very pushy. They wanted to do moshing and stuff. So this happened during the Disco Code set and that really annoyed me and I did not like that. That was very disrespectful because it was a slow emotional song and to decide, oh, let's mosh, like totally uncalled for. But as far as the band, they were fantastic, and they put all their heart and soul and passion, and I could feel, feel that. And they looked like they were having fun, and I guess things went well between them and the co-owner or owners of said convention, because they did come back. Uh, so I will talk about that in a separate video, and uh, spoiler alert, you'll have another opportunity to win more autographed Disico merchandise, so stay tuned for that. Uh, lastly, Anna Suchio was next, and we were able to move a little closer to the stage. There was a gentleman with this awesome t-shirt that he made. There was also a cosplayer from Kamikaze Girls that was there, so that was cool, and I got to take pictures of that. Uh, I was a little bit out of touch with her new material, but it was great to hear some of it live for the first time. Um, she had a special CD for the U.S. Uh, appearance, so there was an opportunity to obtain that, which I'll go more into in the autograph portion. And she also put in a lot of familiar tracks for longtime fans, so a lot of older tracks, uh, stuff you... Uh, fans would have heard from and uh, Nana and uh, stuff from her older releases, I suppose, which is stuff that I was more familiar with. So it was great to hear like Rock That Naughty Body and, and Black, Black Rose, those kinds of songs. So was, that made me very, very happy. to mention that this fool here, <laughs> not even going to say his name, uh, the co-owner, yeah, I don't even want to put his picture up, the co-owner who is the main problem of this convention, the predator of the convention, um, I was so happy that I didn't see him at all because he, he was a big part of just screwing up my experience with Nightmare and, and stuff that he, like, that he made that Q&A, the worst Q&A. So I was happy that I didn't see much of him and he was there to introduce Anna Suchia and they could have picked somebody else. I realized like his introduction before she started the show proved to me that he did not care about Japanese musicians. He did not care about the music. Like, that was not a priority because the only thing that he mentioned was Nana. And Anna Suchia has had a very long career in acting and music and modeling and other things. And there's so many other things that he could have mentioned, but all it was was none of this, none of that, none, 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 and it just like 
how ignorant are you? Like, do some research on the guests that you bring. And I think he tried to do this, like, chanting thing to get us hyped, and it just, it just didn't work. I just, I just got more and more irritated the more he tried to get us excited about Anna Suchia. Like, we're already excited. We're here. Just bring her on. Her concert did not disappoint. I love the energy she brought. She was very confident, very strong. She was just everything that I know her as. So I am glad that I'm able to say that I got to see her, despite that I had to go support some trash convention to see her. So the autograph situation. So if you wanted to get an autograph from Disacode and Anasuchia, you had to purchase a ticket beforehand. And when you are there at the convention, you would have to go to this table and give them, I think it was like a QR code or something that is, I think, I printed mine out. And they would give you a ticket. Uh, they were very strict on uh, Anna Suchia's autographs. She wasn't going to sign any personal items. So I brought my Kamikaze Girl uh, DVD, the girl that was tri uh, uh, cosplaying her character from that movie. I think she also had that movie. I think somebody else had like a CD of hers. But she was only going to be signing the single that she brought. So you got the single with your ticket and that was the only thing that they were going to sign. And then they gave everyone a slip of paper uh, for you to write your name on it. So she can personalize the CD. Uh, you also had the option to have it not personalized at all. Uh, so I obviously wanted to have an item be a giveaway item so I let Angeline take care of my personal CD for me to sign for for me to have and uh, I have the one that was going to be given away which is already gone and it's in somebody's precious collection so I hope you've enjoyed your single um, but she seemed, she was very nice. Uh, you didn't really get to talk to her for very long. Uh, I mean, not that you, you could have like a full on blown conversation with, with people, but they were trying to like kind of move people along very quickly. So she seemed really, really nice. And I think she maybe, maybe deep down inside, maybe felt a little disheartened that she couldn't like, ha like interact with the fans just a little bit more, but they were just kind of like really pushy. And as much as I was like happy not to see that guy, that predator, there that often he popped up again during this like autograph session with her. And I overheard him talking to these like kids or I mean adults, I don't know how old they were. These group of people sitting on the floor just resting and just, you know, gushing that they got their autograph, whatever, and he just slides on in with this sleazy, like, slime trail behind him, being like, Hey, so I got some exclusive merchandise, are you interested? And it just made me think of, like, that old-timey, like, guy in the alley with a trench coat that's, like, goes like this, and it's like, buy watches. That's what it felt like to me. I was just like, ugh. It just, it made me cringe. It made me just... Ugh, I, I hate it. It was so gross, just the way that he was like, hey, he got merchandise for you. And I, I just, like, why? Like, why are you trying to, like, scam people? Why are you trying to, like, lure people into your little, ugh? Anyway, so after that, I got in line and waited for the Disacode autograph, uh, which it was, uh, it, it, it ran the same way. Um, you had to have a ticket to get an autograph from them. And, um, I think you were able to get anything signed. I, I don't remember because, um, I already had one of their albums. I think there was like, it was like their first or second album or something. And, uh, I wanted, of course, to get mine signed and then I wanted another one to give away, which I'm going to be doing in this video. Um, and then after the interactions were pretty good, I don't really remember them very well, but I remember they are pretty nice. Um, so, I mean, it went really smoothly. I think it, there, it wasn't as strict compared to Anna Suchia. Um, by the way, she did not have a Q&A at all, which I 
I was sad. I'm I'm sad that I we didn't get to like interact with her a little more other than the brief few seconds you got to say hello or thank you or whatever during an autograph session. That was pretty much the only fan interaction that you get with her. But yeah, she had no Q and A at the con, which I guess is a blessing. That's probably good because I probably would have most likely botched it. It probably would have gone terribly wrong. Uh, just like Nightmare or even Miyabi. Um, but Discord, there was a little more leniency, I suppose, with their autograph session because right after everyone's stuff got signed, they wanted to do a group picture with the fans. Um, I was not part of this group picture, but Angeline jumped in and she's tall and you can see her, you know, circle her face or whatever, but here's the picture. Um, so if you're curious what that thumbnail is in my vlog, that's what that was from. The code after the autographs, they all took a picture, which was pretty cool. That That's pretty much my experience from the comment that shall not be named in 2015. As far as musical guests go, pretty good interaction. Um, wish there was more, you know, with Anna Suchio, but you know what, it is what it is. I'm glad that I met her and I'm glad I got to experience her show. Um, I don't know if she is active musically, like in Japan, or if she's made any new releases or been in any new movies. I don't really keep up with her like that, but um, she's fantastic. Definitely check her out, as well as Dissacode and Nylon Pink. They're all fantastic, talented artists. before if you miss this opportunity to jump into this giveaway I am going to do another Dissacode giveaway because I have seen them two other times so I'm just gonna space them all out so there's definitely more opportunities to win a Dissacode autograph merch so don't be discouraged so the first item that I am giving away that I got signed in 2015 is there, let's see if I can, I can read it, it is Sakura Kuroa, uh, no, is that true? Yeah, Sakura, Sakura, yeah, Sakura Kuroku, Kuraku, yeah, no, Kuroku, Kuraku. Yeah, there we go. Sakura Kuroku, Kuraku. No, my katakana. Okay. And I got assigned by all three members. Here is the album. They have all three autographs. Uh, like I said, I will put a picture of the album in my blog. It has ten whole tracks. So that's what that looks like. And, of course, I had to open it because they had to sign the booklet, but it's in very, very good condition. Uh, I know it's an older album. It's from 2014, but it might be a rare item. I don't know. But, I mean, it's it makes it rare because a little bit more rare because it is signed by all three uh, members. So, how do you enter to win this Autograph album by Dissacode. All you have to do in the comments below is type I love Dissacode and you are entered to win this album. You don't have to subscribe, you don't have to follow the blog, you don't have to share, you don't have to do anything extra. 
just type in I love disco code and you are instantly entered to win this album um, I will put a deadline below I'll give you plenty of time to enter and then I will announce the winner and I will mail this off to you and this will be in your possession and not mine anymore so I am really looking forward to giving away this album uh, it is a very good album I own this myself uh, I have it right here on my shelf with my other Japanese CDs. Um, I'm looking forward to doing another Disco Code giveaway, so like I said, if you miss out on this one, like you're watching this in the future, and the date has passed, and you see that it is closed, and you're like, oh, I really wanted to win some Disco Code merchandise that was signed. Don't worry, I have more that I will be giving away in the future. And I will be doing another one of these, like, story time con report videos. So, but for now, this is what I'm giving away, so please, please enter. Don't procrastinate. You only have maybe a month or so to enter to win, and I really want to give the CD a good home. So, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button below. Also, if you were fortunate or unfortunate to attend this convention that I shall not name in 2015, please let me know in the description. Tell me your experience. If you got any special memories with these bands or anything you wanted to add, I would love to hear your stories. I know it's been six years, but, you know, here we are. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys again in another video. Take care. Peace.